Good morning. My name is Reverend Dr. Fidel Adabaraza, and I'm currently the pastor in charge of Christian education at Christ's Dance and Ministries, Woodley. I'm privileged to share with us our weekly devotional from Sita Moodley that I have entitled, Fix Your Eyes on Jesus, Our Good Shepherd. And this is drawn from Psalm 23 that I want us to read together. The Bible says, The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I'll fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, Psalm 23 is a very personal psalm. This is David's testimony, his personal experience with God. It is a balm to our wounded souls. It covers all of life. With simple beauty, it speaks of green pastures, and still waters, as well as dark valleys and enemies and adversities. But what comforts us and helps us is the psalmist's confidence in God. We realize, as we linger over these words of Psalm 23, that what David writes is not poetic exaggeration or theoretical theology. He has experienced God in these ways. He has heard his voice. He has followed his lead. He has felt his care. And beneath the beauty of his words, there are solid convictions that are formed in the crucible of crisis. Now, in the first three verses, David refers to God in the third person. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me. He restores my soul. Then in verse 4 and 5, he shifts his uh, utterance and he refers to God in second person. He says, I'll fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me. You anoint my head with oil. And then he closes up again in verse 6 by returning back to the third person. And he says, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, why does David switch from talking about God with he to talking to God with you? And why does it happen in verse 4? Why didn't he just go on to say, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for he is with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. May I suggest to us, my brothers and sisters, that the change he to a more intimate you happens in verse 4 precisely because it's there he speaks of the valley he has walked. He has felt the shadows closing on to him. Verse 4 describes the crisis points in his life. And in those times, something deep happens between David and God. You see, we are more prone to talk about God when we are in the green pastures. And more prone to talk to God when we are in the dangerous zones, when we are in the dangerous gorge, when we are in the dangerous ravine. In the light, we are prone to wander off in pursuit of greener grass. But in the dark, we hug his knee. David changes from comments about God to communion with God because during his valley time, he stayed ever so close to the shepherd, never taking his eyes off him. He had experienced God in a way there that had ushered him toward intimacy with the Almighty God, with the Almighty Shepherd. You see, when life hurts, 
as it sometimes will. And now it is for most people due to COVID-19 pandemic. I invite you to a familiar oasis where we'll see that God is closer than you think in times of crisis such as the world is in now. Many people have lost their loved ones. Some due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but some due to other illnesses. Some have lost their source of livelihood as they have been laid off their work. Businesses have collapsed. Some, their salaries have been cut into two or into half. Some families are under pressure at, at the verge of breaking and many other things that are happening. My prayer this morning for all of us is that God so imprints his truth in your heart that you will find your confidence in him. You will rise above the storm clouds in your life, even as David did. When you're walking through some unfamiliar valley and the shadows linger, just the way the coronavirus has hit the world and we are all in turmoil, when the doctors have to decide on who to live and who to die because they have run out of the respirators and the ventilators and the patients are way too many. When many other things are happening, remember this. Your shepherd has appointed even this hard time as one of his paths of righteousness. He's leading you through this valley for reasons that probably won't be apparent. But rest assured, he is taking you to the high country where the sun is warm and the grass is lush. Every valley is a pathway to something better. There is hope at the end of all this. There is a ray of light at the end of the tunnel. As Psalm 84 verse 11 says, no good does the Lord withhold from those who walk uprightly. Or as Paul puts it in Romans 8:28, we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. The valley isn't good, but a good shepherd is. The Lord Jesus Christ is good. He knows the way. Now, what do we learn or glean from David or David's confidence in times of crisis? One thing we learn from David is that the shepherd has you covered. My brother, my sister, our Lord Jesus Christ, our good shepherd, has you covered. David tells us how to be fearless in adversity. He tells us that in, even in the valley of the shadow of death, he didn't dread the distress he would face or cringe in the face of crisis. Now, how do you fight fear when you don't know what's going to happen next and your imagination is working overtime? How did David do it? David tells us his confidence came from three sources. Number one, David's confidence came from the fact that he stayed in God's presence. In verse 4, David says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now first, David speaks of God's nearness, his presence. Now, when you step into your valley and it's so dark, you can't even see the path ahead. And you know the possibility that there are predators and enemies laying in wait for you. Your shepherd has this to say. He wants you to hear this. I will be with you. The Lord Jesus Christ assures you that he will be with you through the valley, through the dark seasons. Don't turn to drugs. Don't turn to women or to men. Don't resort to drinking. 
or find some other substitute that you think will help, help you get through this valley. All you need is your shepherd. And he assures you that he will be with you. Hebrews 13 verse 5b to, and to 6 says, He has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. The Lord is my shepherd. I will not fear. There is no valley, no matter how dark, that you will go through alone. He will not leave you. He has not left you. He has not left us. Even in the face of COVID-19 pandemic, the Lord is with us, no matter what you're going through. Secondly, David drew his confidence from the fact that he saw God's power. David said he had no fear in adversity because of the comfort of God's power. He drew his confidence from God's power. God's power protecting him from that which will drain him. A shepherd's rod was a two-foot club made of oak with a rounded head that was whittled from the knot of the tree and had sharp bits of metal pounded into it. Now, this club was used to defend the flock against attacks from the enemies. It pictures the shepherd's power wielded against overpowering enemies that will come to attack the sheep. And just like David, child of God, this morning, I call on you, you need not fear. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So the Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, draw your strength from God's power. Draw your confidence from God's power. And thirdly, David drew his strength and confidence in the fact that he experienced God's leading. He says, your staff comforts me. God's staff comforts him. He was referring to the shepherd's crook and with its hook on one end. You see, a good shepherd would use it to guide the sheep lest they stray away. And just a gentle tap of the staff on a lampside would move them back into the fold. And the crook could gather up a sheep from a place where it might have fallen. So David felt comforted that his shepherd was guarding his steps, making sure that he makes it through the darkest, the darkest of valleys, the darkness safely. David was supremely confident in God, not only about his present circumstances, but of grace in the future that will see him all the way home. He believed that the valley times were appointed for his good. He learned things about God that could be learned no other way in the deep province of life. He stayed close to God. He trusted in God's protection. He trusted in God's guidance all the way, all because he could say, the Lord is my shepherd, child of God. Trust in God's presence. Know that God is present and stay in God's presence. In the face of what you are facing, stay in God's presence. Secondly, draw your confidence and strength in God's power. Know that he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will never abandon you. And he has got the whole world in his hands. And thirdly, experience his leading. Let him lead and guide you. Trust not in your own understanding. Trust in the Lord at all times. When you find yourself weak, when you find yourself in the dark uncertain of the future, when all the color has drained out of life and your soul is downcast, Look up to God. Fix your eyes on Jesus, our good shepherd. Stick close to him. 
Trust that he knows the way through this valley and will see you safely through. Believe that he has good reasons for taking this route, even though it is hard and unfamiliar. And hold on to the truth that there is something better waiting on the other side of this valley. God bless you. And let's pray. Dear Almighty God, we thank you this morning because you are a good shepherd and you hold the whole world in your hands. Lord, we draw our confidence in you, O oh God, just as the psalmist did in Psalm 23, O oh God. We draw our confidence, Abba Father, in the fact that, O oh King of glory, you are our leader and you will lead us safely to the other side of the valley. And there is something good awaiting us, O oh God, in your presence. So we thank you and we bless you and we pray for every family every individual, every person, that you will reassure them, O oh God, and that Jehovah you will intervene in their personal situations. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.